Um, okay, so today we're going to continue on with our lesson on microorganisms and the next group up are bacteria. Now, when most of us hear the word bacteria, we are more than likely to think about dirt and disease. Um, but actually, the number of really bad and ugly bacteria that cause disease, and these are known as pathogen, are relatively low. So bacteria, like people, I guess, there's good people, there's good and bad. And that definitely, that certainly is the case with um, bacteria. Now, if we have a look over here, what we're actually looking at is bacteria under the microscope. Now, there's all different types of bacteria. Um, this particular type and this type down here is what's known as cholera. And cholera is a particular bacteria that causes disease, particularly in third world countries where um, water sanitation is pretty bad. Um, but again, that, that would be an example of a bad disease causing bacteria. Now this is an important term that you need to learn. It's called pathogen. So what, what does it mean? What does pathogen mean? So pathogens are microorganisms that actually cause disease. And we look at a number of them. And I'm going to get you to do an assignment uh, where you're going to create a presentation in relation to um, so, some of the diseases that we're going to talk about next. And if you, you will send it on to me. So if we have a look here, so some of the... Um, so some diseases that are caused by ter by bacteria. So cholera is one, for example, and this particular one it really affects people in third world countries where, where water sanitation is pretty poor and um, it's caused by bacteria. Um, you have uh, tinnitus. You also have this other one called tuberculosis or TB. Um, again, another big problem is if you don't uh, brush your teeth properly, you get a uh, dental tooth decay or dental car dental decay. Basically what happens is if you don't brush your teeth, you get um, sugar left in your mouth. And what happens is the bacteria actually feed off the sugar and they produce waste. And that waste actually uh, breaks down the enamel of your teeth and it causes tooth decay. And it's not, it's, it's very unpleasant. And the way to kind of combat that is to brush your teeth. But again, bacteria are very, very hardy. Um, you have to brush your teeth every single day, twice a day, for example, just to kind of keep bacteria at bay. And but, that, but that's what causes your death. Okay. It's caused by bacteria. It's caused by bacteria in the mouth. Uh, strep throat, again, it's another form of bacterial infection in the, in the mouth. And then also as well, uh, another big one is food poisoning. So this is something that's really, really important. Um, for example, if you're running a restaurant, uh, it's very, very important that you maintain strict hygiene and standards within the kitchen because food poisoning can easily get into food. You can get bacteria such as E. coli and that can get into your food and it can cause uh, severe symptoms as well. If it can be pretty bad. So it's food poisoning. So these are just some of the, so these are the bad bacteria and the diseases, the, the disease, some of the diseases that are caused by bacteria. Now I'm going to get you to pick one of these and I'm going to get you to research in a little bit more detail, but I will talk about that towards the end of the lesson. Now bacteria are extremely, extremely small. So if we were to look, for example, here, let's say we were to take the size of one of these bacteria, the size it is as per the screen. Now, in comparison to, let's say, a normal human cell or a plant cell, if the bacteria is, this, is the actual size that we see here on the screen, then an animal cell would be the size of you, okay, in comparison to this bacteria as well. So they're very, very, very small. Um, in comparison to the individual cells that actually make up the human body. So it's just to kind of give you a size comparison. These are extremely small, micro, as, as the word goes, microorganisms. You actually need a microscope to, to be able to see these. And another big area then as well in relation to bacteria is food spoilage. So for example, if we leave out food, okay, so let's say if you were to leave out a piece of meat okay so this is your piece of meat and you're to leave that out there for a couple of days what's going to happen is it's going to start to spoil and a big part of that is due to microorganisms and um, so microorganisms they actually get in there and they want to so microorganisms remember these are living they're living cells so they want to they need food 
so they need food and um, they need water okay they reproduce they respond to their environment so they respond to their environment and um, they produce waste Okay, and they're they're generally they're they're made they're, they're single cell organism, so they have they have a cell as well. So they're very similar to us, and in in that regard, they need food. So what bacteria will actually do, like when food is left out, bacteria will start to to break down the food and start to incorporate nutrients from the food into their body as well. Now that's not always a bad thing. Okay, it's a bad thing when it's when it's when bacteria get into food and they cause um, spoilage in food, but it's not necessarily always a bad thing either. And we look at, so these are some of the bad, these are some of the, like obviously disease pathogens, disease causing bacteria is bad, but they're not all bad. Um, so what we're gonna look at as well, we're gonna look at some of the, some of the good, um, some of the good things that bacteria actually do. So as I was saying, not all bacteria are bad. So some of the good bacteria, so what are some of the good things that bacteria do? So when bacteria are good, they're very good. Now, one thing that they do, they're like the waste men of nature. And what I mean by that is that they actually, they're decomposers. So bacteria, known as decomposers, break down dead organic matter. So for example, you have a tree. Okay, so this is my tree. So your tree like this. What does a tree have? It has loads of leaves. So what happens is, you know, let's say for example, when we start to come into the winter months, we get a huge amount of leaves falling on the ground. And you'll see that. It's actually quite nice. So you'll get loads of leaves falling on the ground. Now, around towns, for example, in Boyle, the council are going to sweep away the leaves. But if we think about out in nature, what, I, what happens to those leaves? Like if they're left unchecked and they, they don't break down, for example, every single year you're just going to get piles and piles of leaves all just piling on top of each other. Now this, this, is, this will create a, a massive problem. But what actually happens is they disappear. They actually break down. What helps them to break down? Bacteria. So bacteria actually get in there and they break down the leaves. So they actually break down, like if you think about a leaf, a leaf is quite a complicated system. It's made up of billions of cells all joined together. Um, and what the bacteria actually does, it gets in there and it breaks down the cells into basic uh, units or basic uh, nutrients that it can use and then that can be put back into the environment as well. So that's one example. So these are known as decomposers. So the base also the same thing happens as well. So if you have, for example, an animal. So this is our animal here. Very bad drawing of an animal. So it dies. Again, what happens is uh, bacteria get in there and they start to break down, break down the animal as well and take all the nutrients that make up the body of the animal and they, they take it into their own body and use it themselves or, they, or they, they put it back into the environment where the environment can actually use it as well. So again, very, very important. If we didn't have bacteria to do this, we'd have a major problem. We'd have, the, we'd have um, you know, dead leaves and matter all over the place that wouldn't break down. So it, it, helps, it helps, for example, dead leaves and dead animals to decompose or or break back down into its constituent elements. So it's very important in relation to that process and that cycle. Um, another really important cycle as well that goes on all the time is what's known as this carbon, carbon and nitrogen cycle. So if we think about the air, for example, so the air is made up of oxygen, O2, uh, nitrogen, it's mainly made up of nitrogen, um, we have, what else have we got? We have CO2, carbon CO, and then we have H2O. Now, nitrogen is very, very important to plants. 
and carbon, for example, this element carbon. Carbon is like, um, it's, it's like one of the fundamental building blocks of all of life. So carbon has this ability to bind with four other elements. So for example, you can have four other hydrogens here like this. So carbon is very, very important. Now, there's this process called the carbon cycle. And it's basically how carbon is moved around between organisms. So we know the whole, so for example, there's CO2 in the air. And what happens is plants take the CO2, they take it in to their leaves, and they use it to um, they use it to make to make their own food. Okay, animals then eat the leaf, so they incorporate this carbon into their body, so they do as part of eating the leaf. Okay, so this is what's known as the carbon cycle. So basically, bacteria are very very important in relation to this. They help this to happen. Uh, the same with nitrogen as well. So plants, for example, they can they can take in nitrogen. They can fix nitrogen, they can take it in through fertilizers, for example, in through the roots. But what helps them to be able to do that are bacteria. Bacteria help them to do that. So this is a really, really important cycle. So the carbon, it helps recycle carbon and nitrogen in the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. So if you think about, so for example, if you think about the whole carbon, for example, carbon is, is in the air in, in the form of CO2 and um, plants take that in. They use it in the process of photosynthesis. They, it's converted into starch, for example, that's used to make up the, some of the structures within the plant. And then the rest of it's used to uh, make their food and they can make energy from that. Then animals eat plants, for example, then we eat the animals. And what's happening is this carbon is being passed around between organism and organism. And the same thing, a very similar thing happens as well in relation to nitrogen. So nitrogen is just an element. Carbon and nitrogen are, are two elements, but they're very, very important. And this is what's known as the, it's what's known as the carbon and the nitrogen cycle. But key to that process are bacteria. So again, this, the cycles like this, they show us how, um, how interlinked we are, for example, with nature. And one of those links that have, or one of those, Organisms that helps to keep that link going is is microorganisms such as bacteria. Um, they're also used. So bacteria are also used in the making of some antibiotics as well. So this bacteria are very very important in in this regards as well. And um, it's really interesting in relation to these um, antibiotics. Like bacteria can be used to to make antibiotics. So if you think about if you're a bacteria, for example, and you're here and you're living on this this little piece of land here. So you're going to have other bacteria that are going to be living here, and they, they, what they want to do is, they want to, sorry now, they want to take what you have, and what bacteria actually do, they will actually produce, they will produce poison or anti antibiotics to kill off the rival bacteria. So if I'm this bacteria here and we have loads of other bacteria around it here like this, what I can do is I can produce some antibiotics and they will kill off my competition here. And what will happen then is I will have all of this space and nutrients available to myself. So we have bacteria, for example, that, that naturally produce what are called antibiotics. So it's a, a chemical that will kill other bacteria. And what we can do, there's a whole area within um, the pharmaceutical industry where we can cr make these big vats, okay? And within them, we can grow up thousands and thousands of bacteria. And what they'll do is they will control temperature, they will control pH, and um, they will control the amount of nutrients, okay? And they'll create an environment that's perfect for a bacteria and they'll grow up billions and billions of these bacteria cells. And what the bacteria will do then is it'll produce this antibiotic naturally. And then what we can do is we can actually take out the antibiotic and we can clean it up and then we can use that to make useful products, useful antibacteria that can be used then by humans to fight off disease as well. So essentially what we've done, humans, because we understand this process really well and how bacteria produce antibiotics, we're able to use them to our advantage to make antibiotics that help us then to fight off 
bacteria for it. This is some of the disease causing bacteria that cause problems for us. So again, um, some of the really some, like the really good benefits of bacteria is that they can be used to make antibiotics. Um, they are used in genetic engineering of some very useful products as well. So again, this process here that I've been talking about here, what, what scientists can actually do as well is if we think about the genes of a bacteria, that controls all of the characteristics of a particular bacteria. Now what they can actually do is they can change the genes so that the bacteria will produce some kind of protein that's very useful to us. Now a really good example of that is if we take, for example, a common bacteria, it's called E. coli. E. coli. And it has DNA. So, for example, it's going to have DNA when it inside in its nucleus. Uh, sorry, I'm still trying to get the grips with this new technology. Okay, so it has DNA. Now, what we can actually do is we can take, so if we take insulin, for example, so insulin is produced by the body, by humans, and we use it to regulate the amount of sugar that's in the body. And what can happen is sometimes people who have this condition called um, diabetes, so it just means that their body cannot produce enough insulin or cannot produce any insulin, for example, to be able to regulate the sugar levels in the body. Now, what we can actually do is we can make insulin. So we can make this chemical that we can, that a person that has diabetes can inject into their body. And a big way that that's made is they take these tiny E. coli bacteria and they take out their DNA. So imagine we have a strand of DNA here. And remember the DNA is basically like it's instructions. It's instructions that the, that the cell can use to make particular types of proteins. So imagine you have all these sections of DNA and they're known as a gene. And what we can do is we can take, we can take, for example, the gene that's used to make human insulin. And we can insert it into the DNA of a bacteria. And then we can insert this modified DNA back into the E. coli. And then what will happen is this E. coli then will actually produce human insulin. And we can then harvest that human insulin and put it into, for example, into an injectable. Okay, we can put it in here. And then that can be used then as a therapy to treat um, to treat diabetes. So this is this is this whole area of it's what's called genetic genetic engineering. So they can essentially take the genes from, they can take a human gene that makes insulin, put it into the bacteria's uh, genetic material, and then what will happen is that bacteria will actually start to produce insulin for us that we can use. And then we can grow up the bacteria in big um, reactors like this, and then we can isolate, the, get them to make loads of insulin, then we can take the insulin and clean it up and make a product out of it that we can use. So again, that's some of the good benefits of bacteria. And they play a vital role in human health through their activities in the gut as well. So this is a whole big area as well, probiotics, for example. So in your gut, you have bacteria that actually help you to break down and actually help you to get uh, nutrients, help me and you to get nutrients out of our food as well. And without them, there's certain uh, vitamins and things that we wouldn't be able to get out of our food uh, without the without bacteria and it's a whole area of um within medicine as well that they look at like you know good good having a good good bacteria good gut bacteria and we have a huge amount of bacteria in our gut as well and they help us every single day so bacteria are not necessarily a bad thing so this idea of for example we have bacteria in our gut that help us to extract nutrients from the food that we eat. Um, so that means that, like essentially, we're, it's two organisms living together. We have ourselves, and then we have the bacteria as well. And we work together. So they get what they need from us, they get food, and we get something from them. They help us to extract vitamins, for example, out of our food. Now this relationship is what's known as uh, mutualism. And again, this is an important term to remember and to learn. So mutualism is where two organisms live in close association and both of them benefit from the arrangement as well. So this is like both 
parties get something out of the arrangement. Some bacteria will come in, infect the human body, they take the nutrients from the human body and they produce toxic waste that kills us. So that is certainly not an example of mutualism. Mutualism is where they both um, organisms live together. They live in association together and they both get something out of it. So there are trillions of useful bacteria in our gut. So this is a huge number and literally trillions of useful bacteria in our gut. These bacteria are mainly found in the colon, so in the large intestine. So if we remember what the, the human digestive system looks like, just here's a picture. So we have here the large intestine. So large intestine. Okay, and then this is the small intestine. And again, within here, there's loads and loads of bacteria. So as it said here, there's trillions, trillions of useful bacteria. So think about this whole large intestine is going to be filled with uh, trillions and trillions of bacteria that when you eat your food it actually helps you to absorb nutrients out of the food as well. So, so they are described as mutualistic bacteria because they benefit they benefit from us, a nice cozy place to live. So they, like, the conditions in your colon are perfect for, for these particular bacteria. So they like living out and hanging out in here and they get a lot for, from, they get a lot from it so you eat and then your food has to pass through your large intestine they get a free meal but then they also help you to break down your food and then we also benefit from it as well so again this is this is a huge area as well and um, there's loads of research that goes on in relation to um good 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 gut bacteria so if we think about some of the benefits then the benefits of mutualistic bacteria in the human gut they can help they help us to digest food. So for example, they they actually help us to uh, break down our food. And we have we have evolved with these particular bacteria. So they they help us to digest some foods and they produce they actually not only do they help us break down our food, but they also produce certain vitamins that are that we need. So they produce vitamin B for energy and they also produce vitamin K which is very important in relation to clotting of your blood as well. And there's a lot of studies that go into this as well. You know, for example, people that feel depressed and depression, they can look at the arrangement or like what bacteria they have within their, within their, within their um, like found in the, the colon or the large intestine. And like if this is out of zinc, so sometimes, for example, when you take, this is why it's one of the reasons why, um, if you go to a doctor, they try and reduce the amount of antibiotics that you use. When you take an antibiotic, it not only kills the good bacteria, but it kills the bad bacteria, but it also kills the good bacteria in your gut as well. And this can cause this can cause problems as well. So for example, you may not be able to produce as much vitamin D as you, as you would normally be able to produce after a round of antibiotics. And this can lead to, you know, kind of fatigue and things like that. Um, so just also as well, just other things to think about. So they prevent harmful bacteria from surviving in the gut. Uh, the sheer number of good bacteria prevent the harmful ones from increasing in population. So again, remember, like bacteria will produce natural antibiotics to kill off their competition. And in that way, and also that just because the sheer number, they literally take over your colon and bad bacteria then won't be able to get in there and take a hold. So this is something that's really, really important as well. Uh, they, boost, they boost our immune system and keep harmful. Okay, sorry now. They, so they boost our immune system by keeping harmful populations of bacteria under control as well. So they very much, this is their home, your colon. And um, so they want to keep you, they want to keep you alive and they want to keep uh, <clears throat> they want to keep you alive and they want to keep their home intact. So what they're going to do is they're going to fight off bad bacteria or anything that's a threat that they feel is a threat to, to its home. So what they'll do is <clears throat> they actually boost your immune system by keeping harmful populations of bacteria under control. Now, we have then this idea then of what are called probiotics. So probiotics are living organisms that improve human health. 
so they're living organisms and you, you'll see these different like probiotic drinks for example um, and what they're supposed to do is um, they're supposed to contain bacteria for example good bacteria that help to increase all of the amount of good bacteria in your colon so they're taken as food supplements in the form of yogurt drinks and capsules so you'll have probiotic drinks yogurts or different types of and one such product is like for example the known actimel okay so you have all these different types of yogurts and drinks and they are known as what are called probiotics and they basically they're food supplements that can be used to um, increase the good bacteria in your gut. So a probiotic that is of particular help in the human gut is lactobacillus. So again, this particular is a strain of bacteria that's particularly good in the in the gut as well. And some of these probiotics will claim to help increase the number of good bacteria within your gut. Now one of the things I would be very skeptical in relation to these, so what they're basically saying is that these um, particular yogurts and drink contain uh, these good bacteria. Now if you think about it, when you eat food, where does the food go? It goes into your stomach. Now when the food goes into your stomach, what's inside in your stomach? Okay, so you have inside here in the stomach, you have high, it's, it's very acidic. Okay, so within here you have acid. Now, if we think about these bacteria, when they come into contact with acid, the acid is going to kill off the bacteria as well. So, how mu how much of how much of these probiotic like drinks, for example, how much of it actually gets into your gets past the uh, the acid in the stomach and into your large intestine or small intestine? In my opinion, would be quite low because the acid is going to it's going to kill them off and break them down. So, um, this bacteria is also found in you're eating in women during childbearing years where it can prevent attack by harmful disease causing bacteria as well. So again this is really important um, because it's going to help for example it's going to help um, fight off bacteria and kill, like, get rid of uh, pathogens as well because again the bacteria sees us as their host and they want to keep us safe and that's what they do as well okay so so there are some of the benefits so so we have bacteria so we have some of the good bacteria and some of the bad bacteria um, and so I hope you enjoyed that now what I want you to do just for today I'm going to get you to so we'll just get you to work on these questions here so answer these questions so what are pathogens are bacteria usually pathogenic Name three illnesses caused by bacteria. Give three uses of bacteria. And are antibiotics useful against infection caused by microorganisms? And give, um, give an expectation to your answer as well. So answer these questions, take a picture, and just send it on to me via the chat option. And um, also well, what I want you to do, and I think you might find this uh, useful as well, I want you to look at and do a little bit of research on, you can just pick one of these particular disease causing bacteria and I want you to create a PowerPoint presentation. So you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation. So let's say if you decide to look at cholera. Now the areas what I want you to look at. So you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation and you're going to look at whichever one you pick. So if you pick cholera for example, I want you to look at the signs and symptoms of cholera. What causes cholera? Okay. Um, I want you to think about how can cholera, how is it being prevented, or how, if you pick one of the other diseases, how, how is it prevented, what are the treatments for it, and just give us a kind of brief history of the disease, and then also the impact it has on society as well. So they're the kind of areas that I want you to focus on in relation to the particular disease causing, or disease that is caused by bacteria that you, that you decide to focus on. And what I want you to do is just to create a PowerPoint presentation. So when you look at your, and just bear with me now. So you're going to create a PowerPoint presentation and you can use, you can use PowerPoint, you have access to it. And I want you to create a narrated PowerPoint presentation. So you're actually going to go in, uh, open up your PowerPoint. So create your PowerPoint as normal, put in your slides, put in 
under all of the headings that I've just mentioned. And I want you to go into this section here. So within PowerPoint, you have what's called slideshow. And within slideshow, what I want you to do is to create a narrated PowerPoint presentation. So basically, what does, what does that mean? So you can click on this here. A record slideshow and what that will do is it'll bring up a box and it'll allow you to record your voice over uh, the over the PowerPoint slide and what that's what I want you to do so I want you to create a narrated PowerPoint presentation cover each of the sections that I've talked about so just play around with this it's fairly straightforward to use you just hit record so keep these two ticked so start recording and what it'll do is it'll kick you into um, a presentation mode which is done here and you'll see this little box like this and it'll start counting down so when this is what this means now is that when you click record it's actually recording and you can see there it's recording your voice over that particular slide and you can record your voice you hit pause like so okay if you need to take a break and it'll record the um it'll pause the recording for you so then when you're ready to go again just hit resume and then it'll start recording again and you just do that for each slide. You can create a particular recording for each slide and you just talk about each slide. And then when you're finished recording, all you do is you click close and that'll bring you back into your, your PowerPoint presentation. Now see down here in the bottom left, so this is actually, this symbol here represents your, your recorded voice. So you can click on it and it'll bring up this, what, this here. And what you can do is you can actually play back what you've recorded and you can listen to it. And if you're not happy, you can go back up in here and go to record as well. Okay. So you just hit play. Basically what that does, and the audio might not be great uh, because I'm using a different system to record uh, this lesson. When you hit play, what that will do is it'll play back your voice or play back your recording um, your voice over on the slide. So that's what I want you to do as well. So do the questions, take a picture, send them to me via the chat option, and also do up your, your presentation and send that on to me as well. That would be great. Okay, guys, thank you. Hope you're having a great day. And um, so just work on so work on the questions and work on the on the presentation. You can do that for the second like so it's a double class. So do it for the second portion of the class and then you can also do it then tomorrow as well. And if you can send on your presentations to me then, let's say Monday, Monday at the latest. Okay, so guys, look, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and we will talk to you during the week. Okay, thank you.